I get so tired of like, it's a beast of a machine. It's a monster. Uh, how about it's a dragon of a laptop? MSI, Dragon. As I get older, I appreciate the differences in things like laptops more and more. Machines built for specific purposes. There's a subtle difference here, but a creator machine should have a slightly different feel than a gaming laptop, even if the performance might be similar. MSI sent this over. This is the refreshed Z17 for me to take on a test drive and share some thoughts, and it is a really powerful system. So I'm just gonna let the specs slide out on the screen for a second. I trust you know how to use a browser that you can also pause a video and you don't need me to read all of these components to you, yeah? This is a 17 inch laptop, which means it fits a different kind of workflow and portability. I think this is a desktop replacement, a computer that can be moved around a bit more easily than a tower, but it's not really a run and gun kind of laptop. For example, when I was covering more trade shows, especially my days at Pocket Now, there were times we needed to edit footage at the show, literally sometimes sitting on the show floor. And then there were times we could shoot a bunch of footage and then walk that back to a press room or to a hotel room. That, right there. Two completely different needs in a video editing laptop. The Z17 is the machine you want in the press room, really cranking projects out. I don't know that it's the machine I want in my backpack when I'm carrying it on the show floor. I have to immediately applaud MSI. I really like this direction that they're heading on their creator machines. From using the Creator 15 to now, this is a sleek and professional look for a portable. It looks the part, and it should fit in well if it's needed in a more professional context. You're, you're not always taken as seriously if you show up in a meeting and your RGBs are flashing the rainbow. It's not fair. That's a nice laptop, but it's just the impression other people get. Decent collection of ports. We've got two Thunderbolts, a headphone jack. On the other side, full-size HDMI, USB-A, and a full-size memory card slot. But I have a question for you folks watching this. How critical would an Ethernet port be for a pro machine for you? Drop me some comments down below. And while you're heading down there, hit that bell icon on your way. On the whole tour of the machine, especially on this outer casing, my only minor gripe, and it's small, but that would be the magnet and the hinge. My review unit is just a little too stiff, in my opinion. You really gotta dig a fingernail in there and lift vertically to open this up one-handed. Otherwise, you're constantly two-handing, you're trying to keep the machine from sliding around. It, it needs just a little bit of tweaking, just a little bit looser. And while I keep shooting this, I'm gonna plug in uh, make sure this thing stays charged. Upon opening the lid, you're greeted with a gorgeous display and Windows Hello is fantastic quick at unlocking Windows. I'm very pleased to see both options for face and fingerprint unlocks. All of our premium phones and tablets and laptops should have both options. This is certainly a more work-focused machine. It's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. I absolutely love that. And it's liquidy smooth. It's a clear difference running Windows 11 on this as compared to running Windows 11 on more student grade gear. This is really pretty. Now here's one more, I'll have to step back just a bit because I'm not really a display expert, but the screen looks really good to my eye. And my YouTube video of this is not gonna do it justice, trying to shoot video of it here in my gadget lab. MSI is putting all the big numbers on color and accuracy and refresh rate and resolution. I'll have to let someone just a bit more technical break that down. I think this is stunning. Another curious addition though, MSI is including pen support. And that means I have another question for folks out there. Considering the shape and size of the Z17, I don't know how practical this would be as an art or graphics tablet. There are certainly other fine touch and editing uses for a proper pen, but it's not like we can flip this into a tent mode or and the screen won't lay perfectly flat. I, I'd be worried about kind of bending that top lid. So that's another topic. I kind of appreciate some thoughts, some feedback in the comments would this work for you? It makes the Z17, it's one of the most productivity complete packages I've ever seen, but I don't do a lot of graphics work like that, so I can't judge 
how useful this would really be out in the field. But I can judge the audio, and that's pretty good. There's a quartet of speakers. I think the speakers are kind of mid-pack for this class of ultra-premium laptop. They're good, but they depend on some table bounce. We've got two speakers here in the front, and I feel overall the entire package could use just a touch more low-end. <laughs> Always happy to see a 3.5 millimeter jack and the headphone amp is really punchy. It's fun. Zero issues driving some of my thirstier monitors like my bearer dynamics. We've got plenty of headroom for more demanding headphones. The DAC built into this is good. There's a great signal to noise ratio with a low noise floor. But MSI isn't doing anything super fancy here that I can find. Reporting a very good Realtek audio chip, I'm seeing a bit more crosstalk and harmonic distortion than I would maybe want to see in this price range of product. I can't quite call this audiophile grade when we can find some killer dongles and portable DACs that can outperform what's built in here, but the amp is good enough that I could rely on this for some mixing, and I don't think it would be much of a struggle. It's definitely solid good fun for media and entertainment. The keyboard is expansive, it's nicely laid out, and I mean, this is a wide lappy. We get a little baby number pad, number keys off on the side. It's just one of those personal preference things, whether or not you like a layout like this, or, or you just take the time to get familiar with it. I liked the setup, even if it feels like I'm just a touch off center when I'm typing and looking up at the screen. Getting to the keys themselves, the key travel is good. I prefer clickier and clackier feedback, but this is really quiet. So especially when in use, like if you're in a common area, you won't be disrupting other people. I think for more mainline use in someone's home, I would be looking at pairing something like this with another keyboard and mouse, again, especially for my own personal preferences. Hmm, gaming keyboards. I'm pretty sure MSI might make something like that. So that, that's probably a good place to transition to software because there is a little manufacturer bloat. MSI Control Center to tune performance and change up your keyboard backlighting. Yeah, that's probably gonna be appreciated for someone who wants to streamline that kind of setup. But the one thing I really wish manufacturers would stop pre-installing with no choice or option to not install it at setup is Norton Utilities. Getting rid of Norton is such a pain. And I haven't completely scrubbed it from this machine. I can't quite get that last little nag screen when you boot it up from a fresh boot. All of this is well and good, but this is an expensive machine, and MSI makes some bold claims about performance. 12th Gen Core i9 RTX 3080, all the big numbers. First, we just have to acknowledge that there's always some fan noise. These are powerful guts. As soon as you turn it on, there's a slight air to the cooling on this machine. Again, considering the Core i9, I think this is well behaved. During a GPU render on my little one minute YouTube video test that I cut in DaVinci Resolve, there's no perceptible change in the fan noise. If I extend that test out to tax the machine a little bit longer, it renders a solid 4K YouTube quality for around four, almost five minutes before I can hear the fan start spinning up more. If you're tackling projects with more intense edits and effects, then it'll start getting loud. But this machine is delicious overkill for just slamming a couple clips together and slapping on a watermark. Likewise, gaming will really get the fans spinning up too, but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. Performance. We're paying a lot for a compact desktop replacement machine, and I think it delivers. I just don't spend a lot of time looking at or leaning on synthetic benchmarks. I like putting these through real world render tests and timing the completion of a task. Now, I like to point out what a smartphone can do rendering similar video quality on almost exactly the same project in an app like LumaFusion. That's not oranges to oranges, but it is a near approximation of the same completed work. 
how long does it take you to get a file like this? So we compare those numbers and it looks okay. It doesn't look great for the Intel side of this laptop, but you wouldn't really use CPU rendering on a rig like this because the GPU rendering is just so much faster. If you'll pardon the little side tangent here, there's just always a generational transition from desktop to mobile. My main workstation right over here off my shoulder is a second generation Threadripper with the 2080 Ti. It's a pretty good rig for editing and rendering 4K videos. When I built it, the laptops of that age were also getting mobile parts called 2070 and 2080, but we really wouldn't pit them against the desktop variants. We rationally know there's a difference in generational practical compute performance based on thermals and power management and literally the size of those components. But the combination of mobile core i9 and mobile 30 series GPU is now basically in margin of error territory against my Threadripper and 2080 Ti in the same kinds of video rendering tasks. And the newer GPU here does a better job of handling 8K footage than my older 2080. Now, I think we've crossed that generational threshold where the practical performance matches up. And that's a critical point for folks looking to upgrade from some generationally older systems. We like to pit these things year over year over year. We do not see the benefits of this kind of machinery year over year over year. So if someone had an older work or gaming desktop with a 1080 Ti, but they wanted something a bit more portable, this would be a noticeable upgrade. Going to a laptop with a mobile 2080 might feel like more of a lateral move depending on your workload. This holds true for gaming. We have this bad habit in Techland of putting brilliant higher resolution screens into gaming devices that will probably never support that resolution. My old Razer was a very good example of this. And I also got to review some lower cost Lenovo gaming laptops also similar. Now this is highly game dependent and I'm not a hardcore nuts and bolts gaming benchmarking guy, but my experiences have been very positive. First up, because I'm old and it's a little silly, but it can still end up being a bit of a difficult test, Tetris effect. Full screen, full resolution, and able to pin the maximum refresh rate, 165 hertz of this display is stunning. That is, beautiful gameplay. One of the thirstier games of sort of the last generation of hardware, Control, I can set to medium graphics. And if you throw on DLSS, then ray tracing, the tricky game for some of the older titles that I like to revisit, Hellblade got really touchy about higher resolution. So I had to back that off to windowed full screen at closer to 720p, but then kicked on DLSS and it perked back up to the high 70s for walking around that intro section that I use for all of my videos. I don't often get this feeling where you can make an argument for the screen resolution for gaming on a portable PC like this. All the parts here match up pretty well. Even better if you don't mind stepping down a graphic setting or using DLSS to help offset the load of ray tracing, this thing gets it done. It's a really expensive rig and it's not advertised as a gaming machine, but it's just as good at the fun stuff as it is the work stuff. But of course, all of my testing was done while it was plugged in. When you unplug it from the AC adapter, a bit of your performance will fall to better handle the load on the battery. <laughs> Even using your performance mode in Windows settings, you gotta tweak a bit just to try and get it a bit closer to when it's plugged in. I don't think anyone's gonna be too shocked by this, but this is my first experience with a mobile Core i9 actually in a mobile chassis with a battery. My last experience with a Core i9 was in a Nook. But if you've been working these high performance Intel parts in other machines, then you're probably familiar with this phenomenon. Pulling the power cable on Tetris Effect drops the frame rate from 165 frames per second to 30 frames per second. Again, on a practical work project, a video render, we see around a 15% reduction in GPU rendering speeds in DaVinci Resolve. And man, rendering on the battery eats that battery. You're dropping a little faster than 1% battery for around every 40 seconds of rendering time. Again, Nothing super fancy. I'm just slamming some 4K files with some simple transitions and a watermark. The job took about eight and a half minutes to render, and I went from a full battery 
down to around 80%. Honestly, that's pretty good, all things considered, but you really wouldn't use it that way, would you? If you had to do the editing and rendering on battery, you'd probably run out of juice before you got to the end of finishing that project. That really drives home the use of this product for me. I can use it on battery for a bit, but it's really not built to be super portable. It's big and it's heavy and it's powerful and it's gorgeous and it's a lot happier when you plug it in. So that's where it's gonna get the most positive recommendation from me. It's best used in a manner where you can set it up and count on a power outlet somewhere nearby. It's too thirsty for use on the show floor, but it's absolutely brilliant in the press room. And that's gonna bring us to the end of this where we kind of talk about price and this puppy is not cheap. It's a proper mobile workstation and my configuration with all the bells and whistles, just shy of $6,000, I don't think you should buy it at that listed price because it's not too difficult finding it for less. Shopping a couple sales, especially like over the holidays, I was able to eke out just under $4,500. Obviously what we're paying for is the ability to package all of this up in such a sleek and professional shell I think MSI is in very good shape. If we look out at the Windows, the premium Windows laptop space right now in ROG Strix Scar, we'll arrive at a similar price for a 16 by nine, 17 inch display with a faster refresh rate, but you won't have the touch screen or the pen support. And on laptops, I'd be curious what the practical performance differences might be between a two terabyte SSD and using two one terabyte drives in RAID. I really don't know, but suffice it to say, this is not a super common configuration, which means it's gonna get spendy. We're talking premium tier components, and that comes with the higher price tag. I love the feel of this though. It's a proper professional machine built for grownups to really get some work done. So I will, of course, leave some links down below this video where you can find more information on the MSI Z17 and the rest of the Creator Series. Uh, if you really need to get some work done, these are laptops I've really enjoyed uh, taking out for test drives. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been phenomenal. Those of you who are clicking on links in the description below, checking out my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or if you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, not so much on the Facebooks or the Instagrams, but I will catch you all on the next review.